What? Sweet. So now you. <laughs> oh. Sweet. 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 So now that you've both. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so today I'm going to show you guys how I go about creating some signage graphics for my local soccer club. Now, I've been playing at this club for about three to four years now and over the whole course of that duration I've been taking photos uh, during games and I've also been making a lot of their graphic design work uh, just for marketing uh, purposes and social media. Today what we're going to be specifically working on because it's the start of the season we have signed a few new players and what I did a week ago is take photos of all of these players uh, in a specific position like this and we're going to be using Illustrator and Lightroom to make, basically make a really cool graphic introducing these new players to the club and everyone else uh, that follows our social media pages. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and get started. So the first thing I like to do when I've already got my photos is basically make them look a little bit nicer within Lightroom. Now, if you are yet to take your photos, and I know this is quite a niche thing to do, but obviously if you do have a camera and you do have a team, you're gonna to wanna to get some photos of your players, obviously. Now, just a little tip when you are doing these photos. Number one, make sure or try your very best to do it all on the same day because the lighting is gonna change across different days and you want the lighting to be the same because you want your design to be as consistent as possible. And it'll definitely make editing in Lightroom a lot easier as well. So, lighting, same day. Secondly, if you can, shoot on the lowest form of aperture uh, that you have. I shot on 2.8, and I also stood a little bit back. If you have a zoom lens, I actually zoomed in onto my subject to create that depth of field. This will definitely help you when you are going to remove the background, either within Photoshop or within Illustrator, uh, later on in post. So, that's just two tips when you're taking your photos. But now I'm gonna edit some just to kind of brighten them up a bit and then we'll get into the design aspect. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to just adjust a few things like the shadows, probably up the contrast a little bit. I'm definitely gonna increase a bit of the saturation in the reds because I really like having a vibrant red top on all of the boys. I do like to get a little bit of clarity and overall just play around with it. Have a look at what, what some of the sliders do. See if you like it or not. So once you're finished with that, I like to copy the settings so that I can apply it to the other images. And this is why it's important to take the same photo so that when you chuck on this edit, it actually makes the process a lot faster. In some cases, you're probably gonna wanna bring the whites down because it might be a bit overexposed. And that's where you're kind of going through, you're adding your edit, and then you're kind of just tinkering what needs to be changed. Okay, so now that you've finished basically touching up your photos uh, in Lightroom, I'm gonna head over to Photoshop and show you guys how to basically remove the background so that you're left with the PNG version of your subject so that we can then drag that into Illustrator and create some cool designs. Now, there is two ways of uh, doing this. I like to use Photoshop because I feel like I can get a nice uh, look with the image uh, using the quick selection tool. However, there is another way to do it in Illustrator, uh, which I'll show you after I show you this. Option number one, Photoshop. Basically what you wanna do is just use your quick selection tool, which is over here, and basically just highlight all around your subject until you see these little moving dotted lines. That is what you are selecting. Uh, they're actually called marching ants. I don't know who came up with that one, but lovely. That looks pretty good to me. Just having a look, you can see in some areas here, it hasn't been selected. Now, this is why it's important to, as I said before, zoom in on your subject, take a, take a few step back, and as a result, I've been able to create a really nice contrast between uh, what's in focus and the background. This just makes it a lot easier for Photoshop to basically select and identify what I'm trying to select. The more that's in focus, the more it's gonna get confused, basically. 
So once you're pretty confident that you've selected everything that you want, now you're gonna head over, you're gonna click select and mask up the top here, and you can just play around with these sliders. Then you wanna go down to here, output to selection, you click uh, new layer, click okay. Fantastic, that's looking pretty good to me. Now what I like to do is just remove the background, unlock this layer, remove it, and we've got a PNG. Yay. Now what I like to do is just go file, export, export as, and we're just gonna export it as a PNG. Save it to the same folder so that you can then drag and drop them into Illustrator later. So now what I'm gonna do is basically do the same thing for all of the players that I'm going to be editing and we'll move from there. Alrighty, sweet. So now I've got all of my PNGs ready and now comes the exciting part. I'm going to be putting these PNGs into Illustrator and coming up with a really cool graphic that displays the photo of the person and a bit of information, what the name is, they've signed, probably the year, cool kind of uh, illustrations that's really focused around the brand. First thing that I'm going to do is show you guys how I go about my document setup, quite simple. I've actually just researched here how big the average Facebook post is. Usually I kind of just go off an A4 size, but because I know that these are only going to be posted on Facebook, I kind of want to go that extra step and make sure that the dimensions are going to work perfectly with the platform that they're getting posted to. So it says here to use 1200 by 1500 pixels, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So. Now we've got our artboard, happy days. Anything that we created in this is gonna look great on the platform that we're posting to. So, the first thing that I wanna show you guys is actually the second way in creating a PNG image of your subject. Now, if you're not competent with Photoshop, you don't really wanna open it up, or you maybe don't have the software, and you're just using Illustrator, this is a way that you can remove the background from an image by using the pen tool and masking. So. What I'm gonna do is drag an image over here. That's a big motherfucking image. This is really, really, really simple. Grab your pen tool. I use P on the keyboard as a shortcut, or you can come over here, it's just this one up here. And all you gotta do initially is just make sure you trace around the subject. So I'm gonna do that now. Sweet, so now that you've both drawn your line and your image, what, sweet, so now you've Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. So now that you've both, sweet, sweet, sweet. So now that you've drawn your line and you've got the image behind it, what you wanna do is select both of them and click Command 7, Control 7 if you're on Windows. There you go. It's masked the background with the stroke and you're left with what you've outlined, happy days. <laughs> now that I've got all of my players, I'm just gonna get a little bit creative, see what I can make up. There's no rule book as to how I'm gonna go about this design process, but I am gonna keep a few things in mind up here. Now, because it's a sporting club, I'm gonna be using some fast lines, probably working with some sharp objects as well. I'm gonna make sure it looks quick. I'm gonna make sure it looks professional as well. And I'm gonna always make sure and keep in the back of my mind where I wanna put the text, where I wanna put the branding. Now this is up to you guys, if you are following how I go about this, to take it upon yourself to get a little bit creative and see what you guys can come up with as well. So let's get into it.
my time now. Uh, took me probably about an hour to make it, but I'm pretty happy with the result actually. I decided to use some curved lines uh, towards the bottom right corner uh, because it kind of looks like you know you've kicked a soccer ball, it's kind of got it like a whoosh effect, provides a bit of motion to the graphic. Then I've obviously got the photo of the player with a drop shadow behind him just to bring a bit of depth. Um, I've overlaid some lines above just so that you know it's really cool to look at. You're trying to figure out what's going above, what's going underneath. It's really quite hard to figure that one out. Uh, I've got the branding underneath, the team, the club name, and the hashtag that we tend to use on social media. And then I've got obviously the name up the top uh, with uh, a very, very uh, transparent image of the logo just to fill that background uh, space as well. I think it's quite balanced, really nice. There's a lot to look at, but it's quite minimal in regards to what's actually being conveyed. Um, and so yeah, pretty happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys learned a lot uh, throughout the process. If you've got any advice, please let me know. Anything that you wanted to see more specifically, drop it down in the comments. Either shoot me a DM on Instagram or just, yeah, let me know. Other than that, it's been super fun hanging out with you guys and I will catch you guys in the next one.